Thin stone veneer failures are becoming more and more noticeable in recent years, especially in wetter climates that receive an abundance of rainfall throughout the year. This is due to a combination of factors, but primarily it's a product of poor drainage and polymer modified mortars that are often used to set stone veneers. When specifying stone veneers, both drainage and vapor control must be provided to prevent moisture and mold issues within the wall assembly. Stone veneers and mortars absorb, store, and redistribute moisture to the substrate that they're installed over, functioning as a reservoir cladding. When the sun hits the surface of the stone veneer, the heat from solar radiation rapidly drives this moisture inwards. If drainage is not provided, this can lead to a buildup of hydrostatic pressure against the weather-resistive barrier, resulting in a failure. Additionally, house wraps such as Tyvek tend to be highly vapor permeable and allow too much moisture to pass through at once to the interior at one time, resulting in interstitial condensation within the wall assembly and an accumulation of moisture within the interior framing, as wood components are hygroscopic and increase in moisture content as relative humidity increases. All of these factors increase the potential for mold growth and rot. In this video, we're going to discuss the best practice details for stone veneers. If we're working with a traditional stone veneer application, not a thin stone veneer application, but something more similar to a stacked brick veneer bearing on a ledge with an air gap, this is what our assembly should look like. To control bulk water, we already have an air gap right here between the surface of the weather resistive barrier and the actual stone veneer. So that gap is between one to two inches, and that's more than enough to break capillary continuity between the wet stone veneer and the framed walls, even with the stone ties. So we don't have to worry about liquid water actually bridging between the wet stone veneer and migrating through the WRB if we have that air gap. The air gap can be even smaller than this, but the point is we want to have an air gap to provide a capillary break, drainage, and a ventilation space for air to migrate through to help dry the walls out, where we would have regularly spaced air inlets at the base of the wall and air outlets at the top. This provides continuous ventilation and a weep at the bottom of the wall for water to drain out. Now, this is a good start. However, we need to control vapor that gets driven into the wall assembly. Stone veneers and mortars absorb a lot of water and tend to dry towards the drier interior. Moisture moves from warm to cold and from higher concentrations to lower concentrations. If the weather barrier is too vapor permeable or if there is air leakage, we can actually get condensation on the back side of the drywall if too much moisture is allowed to pass through. So we really want to make sure that our weather resistive barrier is between 10 to 20 perms and that we're using a self-adhered or fluid applied product. This prevents too much moisture from inundating the WRB and then finding a condensing surface within the wall assembly, especially in those warmer climates where we're using a lot of air conditioning and helps to prevent air leakage behind the weather barrier since the weather barrier is bonded to the sheathing. So it's really important that we're regulating vapor flow into the wall assembly with an airtight weather barrier product between 10 to 20 perms. We really don't want to go higher than 20 perms, but we also don't want to specify something less than 10 perms in many cases if we don't have rigid insulation outboard, as we want to ensure that the walls still have the ability to dry out. A second strategy that we can use to regulate vapor flow is to install a layer of rigid foam insulation. This rigid insulation not only warms the condensing surface of the sheathing and protects the WRB, but acts as a vapor retarder as rigid foam is fairly vapor impermeable and will slow the flow of vapor into the wall assembly. This rigid XPS in this detail is about one perm, but we don't have to worry so much about condensation on the back side of the sheathing if we are using the right ratios, since that rigid insulation is warming that condensing surface. So we're getting better thermal performance and we're preventing any inwardly driven vapor from condensing on the back side of our drywall. Now a couple of things to note. We want to make sure that we're using a drainable, self-adhered, weather-resistive barrier. This is because water can be held in tension if it finds a path behind here, as rigid foam insulation tends to be rather smooth, and any trapped water can eventually permeate past the WRB and leak inside over time, and we really don't want that since that can rot out the sheathing. So a drainable, self-adhered weather barrier product, such as Type Hard Drainable Peel and Stick or Hydrogap SA, have little bumps or crinkles in them, and it allows for any water to drain out behind there. It's only about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. We really don't need that much of a gap for drainage to occur. And if some condensation happened to form back here, it could actually drain out and dry into this drainage space. So it serves a couple of purposes. Then we have a more permeable and moisture resistant mineral wool insulation that we're calling out in between the stud cavities. You could also 
to use a blown-in borate-treated cellulose, wood fiber insulation, or any unfaced bat insulation of your choosing. And then if we want to further mitigate any moisture from being driven inside, we have an optional silane or siloxane sealer, and that basically gets absorbed into the pores of the stone and mortar joints, filling them in and creating a water repellent surface. So it becomes hydrophobic rather than absorptive. Now, that's not a foolproof method, but it can help to reduce the surface absorption of the stone veneer, and therefore the amount of water and vapor being driven into the wall assembly. It does not bridge over cracks and gaps, but it will retain the original appearance of that stone veneer without adding a film or shiny coating. Now, if we're dealing with adhered thin stone veneers, this is a completely different story. The problem with thin stone veneers, also known as lumpy stucco, is that if they're installed directly against the WRB, bad things happen, especially if we're using polymer modified mortars. Without a drainage space, the mortars stay saturated, the stone stays saturated, it can result in sheathing rot, some stones fall off from osmotic pressures, the polymer modified mortars lose their bonding strength, so we really want to make sure that we have a drainage space. That can be accomplished either with an entangled mesh matrix like you see in this detail here, or a dimple mat which you can see in this wall detail. We want an air gap that facilitates drainage and also allows air movement behind the stone veneers to dry out the cavity. So we're looking for at least 3 eighths of an inch. You really don't need more than 3 quarters of an inch as that's a little excessive, but that 3 eighths of an inch air gap will allow for both drainage and convective drying. In this first solution, we have our thin stone veneer set in a mortar bed with a metal lath, and we want to install that over this entangled mesh which has a layer of filter fabric bonded to the surface. Here you can see we have the Keen rain screen system, which is basically this high density polyethylene entangled mesh that has a filter fabric bonded to it. You can see that these microfilaments allow water to trickle through but provide enough of a gap to break capillary continuity acting as our capillary break. So that provides our drainage in our drainage plane. Water that gets behind the veneer can drain out and dry very easily. Here we're insulating with XPS, which provides our vapor retarder to slow inwardly driven vapor, regulating vapor that enters into the frame wall cavity to prevent condensation on the backside of the drywall, while providing a thermal break and preventing condensation on the backside of the sheathing from outwardly driven moisture. Then we have that drainable self-adhered weather barrier for the benefits of a continuous water and air barrier, and to provide drainage behind that rigid insulation layer. So if water leaks inside there, it can actually drain out. In the second detail here, we've omitted the extruded polystyrene, and we're opting for this self-adhered weather-resistive barrier between 10 to 20 perms. We don't need it to be drainable because the entangled mesh is serving as our drainage gap back there, but we do want to regulate vapor flow into the wall assembly, so that WRB slows down the flow of vapor, and that's all we really need to worry about unless we're building in a cold climate. Finally, in this solution, we have a dimple mat here, which is serving not only as our capillary break, but also as a vapor barrier. So you might be asking, why don't we have problems with this assembly given that there's a vapor barrier here? Well, moisture that gets driven through the stone veneers, either in liquid or vapor form, hits the surface of the dimple mat and drains out of a perforated J trim. Any moisture drying out of the wall assembly can actually dry into this air gap and the drainage space created by the dimples up and out. Or if water happens to get behind there, it can drain down on the opposite side of the drainage plane. In this detail, we don't need the WRB to be between 10 and 20 perms since the dimple mat is acting as our vapor barrier. It can be as permeable as you'd like, as we don't have any issues specifying something more permeable and closer to 50 perms like a typical house wrap or WRB. Then we can install an optional silane or siloxane sealer to reduce surface absorption. We don't get vapor flow from the outside since the dimple mat is our vapor retarder. We just have to manage interior vapor and ensure that it's not inundating the backside of the sheathing, which could result in condensation. This means that we need to be controlling interior relative humidity levels either through dehumidification, specifying the right type of insulation to warm the condensing surface, or by using a taped smart vapor retarder membrane. For more information on stone veneers and moisture, head over to asiri-designs.com. There we have over 150 free building science articles that range from stone veneers to masonry to flat roof assemblies. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.